thanks for joining me again now back in the coffee van and uh, as you know if you follow the videos the, the van runs on these inverters as well as a generator so we've got um, six huge batteries on it and they run through um, a couple of inverters now the main inverter is the RS inverter um, which is in this little cupboard down here now had a problem with it it switched up powered the coffee machine bang like quite a good bang um, so I stripped it down to see what was going on and um, this is the story on that oh thanks for joining me we've had an inverter disaster we powered up the coffee machine this morning which this little beauty runs there was almighty pop quite loud I heard it from outside the van and uh, bang dead nothing at all absolutely nothing on the light board at the front just completely dead so uh, I took it out of the van Let's pull it to bits and see if we can figure out what's going on. It's a bit of a pain because these are about 600 quid to replace. A lot of money. Don't want to have to buy another one. If we can fix it up, I'm thinking, could it possibly be a fuse? Is there an internal fuse inside that's gone? Is it a transistor that's blown out? <laughs> Something I'm hoping we can get in there, see what's going on, change it out. So let's, uh, let's take it to bits and see what's happening. Now, on this unit, it looks like we've got a series of screws on the end pull one end off, pull the other end off, and maybe a sliding plate. But uh, yeah, let's go for it, let's have a look, let's take it to bits. I've got the old uh, screwdriver, and uh, let's go for this end cap. Six screws, I think, holding this one on the end here. So we've got a bit of a release there. Not sure if there's anything in there we can actually see. I can't actually see any fuses from the top or there. So uh, let's uh, let's dig a bit deeper. Let's pull the other end off. Um, looking at this, I'd say once I've took the other end off, this centre bit here looks like it's going to slide out, which would then reveal the the whole workings at the top of that so let's uh let's do the other side being careful not to disturb too much this end is the be the meaty end we've got the positive the positive and the negative but again we've just got six screws holding it in um let's have a look let's see what's going on uh yeah let's go with this again Ah, it's moved already. So that top plate wants to come out. Uh, do I need to go any further, taking anything else off? Maybe not. Maybe not, and maybe that will I drop that off there, and then, oh, come on, baby. Ooh. This is the RS Pro. It's a really good inverter, supposedly. Um, like I said, it's not a cheap eBay jobby. It's um, it's the it's a good good bit of. Oh, hello, 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 hello. Wowzers! Well, I'm looking at this, and we've got banks of fuses in here. We've got loads of fuses actually. There's and I can see some good news. Hopefully, it's a bit pongy in here. I just hope it's not blown out anything too major that's caused these to blow. But look in here. Let's get you off the. Uh, Get you off there, look. Let me just swish you around a sec so I can see what you see. Right then, so here we go. In here, look, we've got fuses, two, what look like 30 amp car fuses there, two more 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 there, two there, so, and two at the end there, so there's two, Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. 
There's 18 sets of 30 amp fuses and it looks to me that every single one of them is blown. It looks like we've actually blown out every single fuse in there. I can't see anything too... Well, I can't see anything as such. Let's, let's change all of these fuses out, put some voltage to it and see, see what it does. So I've got the old long, long nose pliers there. Let's just grab hold of one of these and wow, they're, they're a bit stiff in their holes. Oh, strange. Maybe I need the smaller one. Maybe we need to go for a smaller pair, a bit more delicate. Oh, 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 it's actually come to pieces within the. <laughs> That's not good. That must have got really hot. Oh, that's really tight in there. Here's the fuse, look. It's absolutely blown there. Like, come. Oh, man. Can't be soldered in, surely. Oh, wow, that's tight. It's not soldered, but it is tight. This side just seems to be. Oh, it won't come out. How about that one? That one's broke as well. These have got extremely hot. Really hot. Oh, it has to come out there. The positive side, though, seems to be the, the tricky one. Oh, it won't shift. Something's molten there. Yeah, maybe it has actually soldered itself to the the circuit board or something because it don't want to come up so I just cut these wires here enough to make enough little looms to extend the fuses the biggest fear out of all of this is what's caused it to blow the whole lot is it a dead short, or is it just that we've overloaded it? I've got it too hot, but uh, we'll soon see. So something along the lines of that is what we're doing. Soldering the little fuses to the uh, wire, and then on the other end, the old bit of fuse that snapped off, one of the little legs, I'm going to re-solder to that and then put that back in to the board. So what I've got, I've got the power pack, I've just connected up the jump leads to the positive and negative. I've only got two fuses in there, so I'll switch it on and just I'm hoping just to see if it's gonna beep, do anything, or is it gonna be redundant when I turn it on? Oh, oh. Boom, blew the fuse. So didn't manage to fix it, couldn't get it sorted. If you know of um, a thing or two about these inverters, uh, I'd be interested to know your thoughts on it. I'm not 100% on how they work, but I've got a kind of a, a vague idea. But I um, had to buy a new one. So went onto the old Amazon, had a good look round, because um, they are blooming expensive for something that's powerful enough to run this um, sort of three and a half kilowatt um, coffee machine. I can't think of what they're called. But anyway, managed to pick up this little beauty in here. Um, now, as you can see, there it is. This is the, call it, I mean, a Gandel, Jandel, not too sure how you pronounce it. Um, but it's a, it's an absolute beauty. Um, Jandel uh, power inverter. 
Um, it's the PM5 PM5000 QBR is what we've got there. So this is a five kilowatt um, normal power, 10 kilowatt max um, peak. So five kilowatts should be more than ample to run the, uh, the coffee machine when it's not on full tilt when it's on um, uh, when it's on regular use it will drop down it'll be pulling about two and a half kilowatt um, it, it, the actual the three and a half kilowatt is just when it's really being hammered so most of the time this is going to be asking two and a half kilowatts that's what that's what we're drawing from it um, it's got a really nice display on the front it's got a readout on here it's got a voltage it's got the batteries it tells you the output through the plug as well 236 volts the machines just kicked in so it is now drawing now the old RS one, not sure what was going on with it because it never the fans it got a multitude of fans in it, but they never kicked in. It never it never seemed to um, to be cooling, and maybe that was the problem. Maybe it just wasn't uh, and it overheated and that's damaged it. This one it's got um, it's, you can hear the fans when it starts to get uh, under a lot of load. The fans kick in uh, and it's cooling down nicely. We've got three sockets on the front, um, and also it's got a. Uh, uh, it's got the USB feeds, but it's got this little remote here, which is just delightful. So up on the wall, which is all it is, is a, like a, um, a little phone cable that, that you get with the kit. And it runs up the wall here to this little chappy. Now what we've got, look at this. It's a delight. It's an absolute delight. If I bring you in a bit closer, you can see there, we've got a remote on and off power button. We've got a fault light, a power light, and we've got the actual battery status. So as the machine kicks in at the minute, it's dropping to two. When it, when it chomps out, it'll come probably back up to three. Um, and that's what we're getting. So it's a, it's a really nice visual indicator of what's going on with the machine. Uh, and, and obviously your battery status. So let's get you back down to the cupboard again. So as you can see there, this is the main gubbins of it. We've got on the front here, you can actually wire directly into this um, with a, a live neutral earth. So if you've got a light, the coffee machine, rather than running it through a plug, we could actually put it in through this, um, through these, the, these terminals on the front as well. At the back, you've got the, the main positive and the main negative, the huge terminals, which are coming up from the battery, um, battery box down there. It seems really well made. It's a really nice, sturdy aluminium box, really good frame nice ventilation through it and I really like the display uh, you can just see there that the uh, the voltage has now gone back up the voltage uh, the output the input voltage and the bars on the battery scale there have uh, gone up to three which is replicated by the uh, the remote scale there which is nice like I say so as you keep opening the cupboard up and having a look and seeing what's going on but yeah so this has been in the van now for probably three weeks or so um, and it's working like a dream. I'd even say that the um, the van is lasting longer. We're getting four hours, four and a half hours uh, on the RS one. It wasn't quite getting there. It was a it, yeah. It wasn't. I don't think it was working quite right. Right from uh, right from the start. I so say this just seems to have a bit more state stability. The machine's working a little bit better off it. It's keeping its heat a bit better. It doesn't seem to be as um, fluctuating as much. Um, it worked. But by far, this is a better, uh, you know, better bit of kit. I'll drop a link in the description to this. Um, if you are needing one for the money, this was absolutely, well, what a bargain. What an absolute bargain. For the RS1 to replace that for the same was 600, uh, £649 which is, um, you know, it's a substantial amount of money that for what you're getting. There's, there's other ones, they go right up to like 1,500 pounds for a pure sine wave. Um, this is a modified sine wave, but it works the van like a dream. It really does, it, it, it's doing a cracking job. So if that's been of use, if you were looking to buy an inverter and you're thinking what kind of unit would you like, five kilowatt inverter is, oh, I, I can't, well, from what we've had, like I say, we've been absolutely spanking this. So it's a really, really stable bit of kit. It's got a soft start on it as well. So if you've got a big load, um, if you plug the load into it and then start the 
and then start the inverter, it, it brings it up slowly to avoid the spike, which protects the unit even more. If that's been an abuse to you, just drop me a little thumbs up, like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.